All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Salty Sox podcast. For those of you uh, who just recently saw us on our live stream, we want to thank you for tuning in. Joseph and I decided pretty recently that we wanted to try to live stream uh, the the trailer drop during Monday Night Football, and uh, we made it happen. We got together. We had 127 concurrent viewers at the peak of the stream. <laughs> We were not expecting that, people. We thought we were going to have... 123 more than we expected. Yeah, we thought we were going to have four or five here. So um, that was awesome. We appreciate the support. We're glad that people could tune in. And um, But we did promise, Joseph, a little bit more of a trailer breakdown. So we want to be able to go through at our leisure, go through this trailer, pause it at certain points, and discuss what is happening, what are our thoughts. So do you have anything to add before we jump right into this? I just want to say we are new to this. We're using a new software, and we're on kind of old computers. Shout out to our wonderful wives who love us so much. Just joke. Um, but we forgive us if there's any problems technically with how this turns out. But I think we're okay, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this trailer breakdown. We'll be pausing it throughout. So don't worry, this is not a, we're going to watch the trailer through, we're going to break it up into small bite-sized pieces and try and help you and us understand what's going on with this trailer. And so with that, Sean, let's hit play. All righty, here we go. Remember, just tell me when you hit pause. I will. We open up on a jungle planet here. It's an instinct. So right away, sorry, right away here. Ray is running through this jungle planet, and I didn't realize until the third or fourth time I watched this, she deflects away a blaster bolt with the lightsaber. It looks like the uh, training droid that we saw in the uh, first teaser, as well as in episode four and episode seven, is making another appearance in episode nine, training her on Endor slash Yavin 4 slash A New Planet. Yeah, didn't J.J. Abrams say that the group... Um, in some of the still shots we got, the group was on kind of a jungly planet that they're supposed to be on at the very beginning of the movie, and it was supposed to be a new planet, but I don't know, I just don't know at this point where we are at any point in time on any of these planets. But uh, let's go back, because right at the end of this of our running, we start to hear a voice, and I think we're both pretty confident it's Finn, Finn narrating right here, so I'm going to turn it back so we can hear what he says here. An instinct. <sighs> Feeling. The force brought us together. Okay, so he says, Finn says, it's an instinct. It's a feeling. The force brought us together. And we see Ray jumping on the jungle planet, then jumping in the debris. Um, oh, I, love, I love that smash cut. That's a well done edit right there. Yeah, so um, I think we talked about before, J.J. talked about how in this movie, unlike some of the past movies, especially Last Jedi, that maybe a criticism of it was our main group of people, heroes, didn't spend a lot of time together in that movie. And so um, J.J. has promised that in Rise of Skywalker, the big three of Rey, Poe, and Finn uh, will be together on an adventure. So... Seems like Finn's kind of foreshadowing that as well. That the Force has brought them all together. I like that. I like that Finn's getting uh, getting some airtime here in the trailer. I think that's great. I, I I think we expect Ray and Kylo to be the main players of the movie, but I like that uh, we're getting a little voiceover from Finn. It's unexpected, and I mean, I love the character Finn. I'm glad that uh, he survived uh, survived the death the the whatever machine that was in episode eight. So uh, glad that he's in this movie. I, I also like, I will say the jump into the star destroyer looks interesting. Kind of reminds me of episode seven when she's in the star destroyer uh, on Jakku. Back to so her scavenger roots. Yeah. It's all paying off. Okay. All right. So let's we keep going again. Let's go. Okay, let's pause right there. Let's pause right here. 
Okay, so we I think we hear Poe now talking, saying we're not alone. And if you see this, in the center of that big group of people sitting under that ship, I don't know if they're under the Falcon or a different ship. Maybe the Lady Luck will see an appearance of Lando's cannon um, ship, the Lady Luck, maybe. Um, but Lando is in the very center of that group. You can see his yellow shirt there, him sitting there. I love, I love it. Almost like he's telling some old war stories and all the young whippersnappers are gathered around listening to this legend of the rebellion, Lando Calrissian. Yeah. And uh, we left episode eight with about, what, 15 to 20 resistance people? Yeah, not it very many. Like, it looks like their numbers have grown. They uh, have met up with a bunch of new people. We have the return of Rose, which is, listen, she's not a bad character. I mean, she's not a bad actress. She's just a bad character. Uh, but I'm glad that she's in it. Definitely polarizing figure, but we see her yeah, here in the still. But then also, if you see in the background here, sorry, the text keeps coming up on the screen, but we have good old uh, Mary... Mariadoc, what was his name? Mariadoc Brandy Buck or Brandywine? Or I don't remember. Lord of the Rings fans. The Tolkien fans are going to uh, come in a, in a fury on the comment section here. But um, yeah, and then also, uh, what's his name from Lost? Charlie, right? Not Penny's Boat. Yep. Not Penny's Boat. Not Penny's Boat. Not Penny's Boat. What's his name? Dominic uh... Monahan or something like that or Monahue. I think it's awesome that he's in it. There were rumors that he was going to be a Knight of Ren, but it looks like he is a resistance fighter. Looks like it. Hey, let's push play. Keep going. Let's hear what Poe has to say. People will fight if we lead them. Okay, let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause right there. Uh, looks like Poe has a new X-Wing. It's orange. Mainly orange. Looks awesome. Uh, his... Previous X-Wing, his Black Series X-Wing, blew up in Episode 8. So he didn't have one, but it looks like he has a new one. Um, and then we have, it looks like, the Tanta 4, or another uh, blockade runner-esque thing flying through the jungles. I think that's a great-looking shot. Yeah. Something about those huge ships in, uh, in atmosphere shots from below. I mean, that looks, that looks awesome. Looks like more people are coming to the to rescue here. I feel like the dialogue is kind of throwaway, not super. We're not yeah. alone. People will fight if we lead them. Like, cool, Poe, awesome. Now, we got cut off a little bit of some of the dialogue once we get to the debris of the Death Star in the water. So let's listen up and see what's being said here. People keep telling me they know me. No one does. All right, so we get Ray yeah. saying, people keep saying that they know me, but no one does, and Kylo coming out of the water with his red lightsaber saying, but I do. It reminds you of The Notebook? It reminds you of uh, um, any of those rom-coms? Or, I mean, my wife kind of came down earlier and said it, it's, she's getting some big romantic vibes here from these two. It is the Raylo connection in full force <laughs> in this trailer, people, all right? I I didn't think it was going to happen, uh, but I, this trailer and uh, my wife smartly pointed out, this is looking more and more like a possibility. There's something going on here. I almost expected in this shot right here where Kylo is kind of flipping his lightsaber, I'm like, is he about to like stake this in the ground? Like give yeah. up his lightsaber and be like, come on, baby. Come <laughs> run to me, Ray. Come on. Come, come on. meet me in the middle, baby. My baby girl. Uh, um... It does look like this is happening at the Death Star ruins. Uh, I do like how Ray is saying everyone says that they know me. Uh, it's very interesting what she's saying there. Kind of a little back at the fans. Like we've all tried to figure out who she is, but no one does. Yeah, I mean, that was such a big focus of Episode 7 was who is Rey, who are her parents, and then there was a lot of backlash in Last Jedi when we found out that they were nobodies, and she's a nobody, and you didn't have to have a, 
you know, a famous lineage to be a powerful force user. Oh, I'm asking, is there more to it now? Is Kylo inferring that there is more to it? Sure, they were nobodies, but something else is going on here. That's possible. I don't know. Okay, now we're, it looks like the next scene is going to be happening on the ice planet. I looked it up at the, the Miga. Or Zam. Or, no, sorry. Not even close. Kijimi. Kijimi. K-I-J-I-M-I. That's the ice planet. Wait, that's confirmed or you're guessing from like Wikipedia that or something? Confirmed. That is confirmed. Oh, okay. The ice All right, let's watch. Okay. Okay, let's pause right there. Let's pause right there. Uh, I'm at the throne of Palpatine. Well, it looks like the throne of Palpatine. It's something. It's someone's throne. Uh, long have I waited. He's Has he been around this whole time? Well, I mean, what's, what type of form has he been taking? What Has he just been twiddling his thumbs, waiting for something to happen? Has he been pulling all the strings the whole time? You know, I feel like every Star Wars movie introduces like a new planet or a new location that's kind of the star of the show. I think in Episode 8 it was definitely Crate with the salt flats and the red, you know, clay and salt coming minerals coming up and things like that. I have felt like the trailer so far and footage of Episode 9, I'm like, alright, the Death Star debris, whatever. But when I saw this ice stuff, I'm like, okay, this is kind of a cool new, like kind of a Superman you know, Fortress of Solitude vibe here that Palpatine has oh, yeah. going on. This is the, uh, this, is, let me read what uh, Vanity Fair says. This described a snow dusted and rocky also houses an area called the Thieves Quarter, which is apparently where the bounty hunter-ish character Zori Bliss, played by Carrie Russell, hangs out. So oh. That is what, the I, I don't know if this scene right now of the throne is the same planet, the previous shot sets it up to be like this is on that planet, which is interesting. You would assume that Palpatine would be with the Death Star ruins. And so this leads to the idea that either th this is a planet nearby to where the Death Star blew up or something else. You know, maybe the whole Palpatine connection is that he is just a spirit or a force ghost type creature. And similar to Voldemort, he is looking for a way to resurrect himself or... Oh, health, find a host and drink some unicorn blood? Yeah, reanimate himself. <laughs> All right, let's I keep going. I love uh, what he says next. Hold on, let me turn it back so we can hear his full dialogue. Yeah. Long have I waited. And now... Coming together. Okay. Is your undoing. Okay. So long have I waited. Uh, now you're coming together will be your undoing. I think, one, there are so many cool shots in that little sequence. The Star Destroyer coming out of the ice, rising uh. up through the ice. I'm like, so, so ha have there been this Imperial probably, fleet loyal to Palpatine? Like, where have all these ships been hiding? He's been frozen somewhere, I guess, on this planet. I mean, that's what it seems like is happening. They're all coming out of this ice, and we see the Millennium Falcon in front of a bunch of Resistance Rebellion ships. We also see what looks like the ghost from Star Wars Rebels. In the background. But what I don't understand about that is the Rebels animated series happened before A New Hope. So for the ghost to be flying around, all those characters would have to be like old, older than, you know, Lando. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know um, how. I mean, it could be the kids. You know, it was uh, what's her? It was That's the two true. characters and their kid. Could be the kid piloting the ship, or it could be Ezra. Ezra went off to, with Thrawn to the unknown regions, so it could be Ezra. Yeah. Full disclosure: I haven't seen all of Rebels. I've only seen the first season. So once Disney oh, so Plus, 
<laughs> once uh, once Disney Plus comes out, I can catch up on that too. <laughs> I just spoiled the very last episode for you. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it is cool to see the Millennium Falcon, and I think one of the things, the criticism of Force Awakens and Last Jedi that you and I kind of agreed with was it seemed like the skirmishes, and I would call them skirmishes, between the Resistance and the First Order seemed so small scale. Other than Starkiller Base blowing up, you know, entire systems of planets, the battle on Krayt, it was like we never saw a big, it never felt like it was an actual war between these two groups. It felt like these small groups of people having these skirmishes, but the rest of the galaxy is like, I had no idea what was going on. Oh, is that still going on? Oh, okay. But now in all these, I mean, today's trailer, past trailers, we see a huge gathering lines of Star Destroyers. We see this huge resistance fleet now. I'm hoping for a pretty uh, epic space battle here in Episode Nine. Okay, I've got a question for you. Who is Palpatine talking to? I think he's talking to Rey and Kylo. I think he's also talking to Rey and Kylo, that them coming together is going to be their downfall. Re let's remember what Snoke said in The Last Jedi, that he was manipulating them to get them together. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to get some sort of Snoke-Palpatine connection? Um, even mm -hmm. though Snoke is dead and people said, hey, forget about Snoke, let the past die, kill it if you have to, Kylo Ren. Snokatine? It seems weird to me that Palpatine and or Snoke would not know of each other or know of each other's plans, that they would be operating <laughs> independently. <laughs> oh, wait, you were trying to destroy the universe and the galaxy? Oh, I was trying to do that too? Wait, you were trying to get Kylo Ren and Rey together for your own nefarious purposes? I'm trying to get Kylo Ren and Rey together for my nefarious purposes. How crazy. Want, want. We're both evil dark lords. Like, well, they want uh, to survive. Cage match style. That's right. So uh, I'm curious to see if there will be any any mention or connection to Snoke in this movie, specifically from Palpatine, but just in general. But I agree with you. I believe it is Kylo and Rey that he is talking about. Uh, last thing I want to talk about in this little, it looks like a ski speeder is coming up over the waves of the Death Star. I don't think it is a ski speeder. It looks similar to what was in... Uh, Last Jedi, but it looks different. Could be a native ship for. It's giving me good uh, Camino vibes. I want to go back to Camino. Yeah. Love it. Can you imagine if we had Caminoans in this movie? Hey, if the Emperor is going to clone himself, he's already worked with them once. Who else would he go to? That's right. Sidious okay. planned that whole clone army with the Caminoans. I'm All pushing right. play. All right, I'm pushing play. What, uh, what are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. At my friends. All right, I'm pausing there. The C-3PO scene, we kind of talked about this in the live stream, and I feel like we had not processed it enough to know. We couldn't, we didn't have formed thoughts on what was happening here. I since have... Thinking back, you know, formed an opinion, thinking back on the D23 footage where we see C-3PO with the red eyes. I am thinking that he has to upload or s upload some sort of program or file that will give them a secret or vital information to fighting Palpatine. Um, but C-3PO maybe knows that by doing so... It's going to like fry his system or wipe his memory or do something. He's going to sacrifice himself to be able to provide that vital information. And so he's, you see, he's got the wire coming out of his head hooked up to something over there, and that little alien is working on him. I think C3PO is very self aware that what he's about to do is, in essence, going to kill him. And so. They, he maybe pauses or something or just is staring at him and they're like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just looking at my friends one last time because I know as soon as we flip this switch and I get you this information, I'm gone. Like, I'm never going to come back. Yeah, so we won't see the, like, destruction of C-3PO, but we will see, like, a mind erase or a hard reset where he's not the same anymore. He's just a 
protocol droid. Which Link Slink. Which honestly would be really actually kind of interesting and poetic, this mirror of at the end of episode three, C3PO gets his mind wiped and a lot of people laugh about that as a gaff because it's like, oh, they shoehorn this in because it would mess up the continuity of the original trilogy if C-3PO had all his memories. And so <laughs> it was just kind of this arbitrary, droids have no rights type of thing. We're going to erase your memory and no one's going to be sad about this, whatever. Whereas now, if at the end of 9, it becomes this poignant emotional moment of him willingly he's, giving up. Wait a minute. He's choosing to do it himself. If he uses his own agency to willingly do it to help the resistance and help his friends, it's going to be like this totally um, kind of more uh, emotional and just a, a, a better validation to the character than just arbitrarily, yeah, we're wiping your memory. It's like, no, he's choosing to do it, and it's for a good reason. Mm. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. We're gonna have to go through some emotional moments in this movie. I'm. I don't know if I'm ready for it. Hey, I got. I got sad when K2SO died in Rogue One. I mean, that was heartbreaking. Sacrificing himself. I mean, droids. Their purpose. I mean, from what I understand, is like to serve the the living, serve the humanoids and the other creatures. And what better way for C3PO to go out than by serving the resistance and sticking one to it. I couldn't agree with you more, and K2SO we only knew for one movie. Right. We've been rolling with C-3PO for ten movies. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, this is gonna... If I feel like if we lose any of those, like C-3PO, R2-D2, Chewbacca, I just can't fathom it, but if they really go that way and, and we lose those characters, it's gonna be pretty intense. Let's talk just a little bit about the new droid. Let me look up what his name is. Isn't the name like? I've seen, him. I've seen toys of him in Dio. Target. His name is Do. Do. Oh yeah, there it is. Yep. He is the new droid. He's pretty, uh, pretty cute looking. To me, he's throwaway. I feel like it's 100% oh. merchandising. BB-8 was good enough. We don't need another littler, cuter, smaller droid. <laughs> At BB-8, then we had Porgs. Now we have Do. But he's I like. Not I mean, yeah, okay. I like him fine. I don't think he'll do anything significant. Okay, okay. I'm pushing play. Okay. All right, this Christmas. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. Okay. So first of all, we see Poe and Chewie and... Was it Finn or Finn. Ray? Finn. Sorry, I was focused on Poe and Chewbacca, and I didn't see who the third person was. I'm pretty sure it's Finn. Running through what looks like to be a Star Destroyer of some sort, or a First Order Standard ship, and he's... Imperial First Order place. Taking down Stormtroopers. So, you know, one, it kind of reminds me once again of Last Jedi when Rose and Finn had their failed mission onto the uh, Dreadnought. Yeah. And uh, so we'll get to see them there. And then... We he we see uh, Ray and Leia hugging, and I'll be honest with you, one of the surprising things about this trailer is we didn't get more Leia. Hmm. I thought that maybe the big moment of the trailer was going to be getting a little more Leia footage. It, we it's basically the same shot we've already got, but we get Luke, his overlay, and what does he say? Confronting fear. That's the destiny of the Jedi. That's right. So uh, once you know, another thing we haven't seen Luke at all. Well, right, we're not going to see Luke. Obviously, he's a Force ghost. I mean, I'd I'd put money down on that. Um, but and so I think that'll be a fun reveal in the movie. I want to go back to Leia just a bit. Um, yeah, I I know the footage that they have of her is limited, so it makes sense why they're kind of reusing the same footage of her because they don't want to give away too much of their hand here. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I kind of want it to be a surprise. Um, I really have no idea what will happen with Leia, and I honestly don't know what I want to have happen with Leia. Um, I'd be okay with if she 
just kind of goes off and lives and they just kind of explain that she's lived her life and she's done with this and I, I would be okay if she I don't know I don't know if I would like it if she died off screen though that's not something I'd want to have happen to her so it's, it, that's probably my not biggest but in my top three what I'm most interested about with this movie kind of the questions I have is what's going to happen with Leia? How are they going to give her a satisfying end? So, I think it's going to be very difficult. I've said this before in a video. I don't think they have enough footage to make a satisfying ending that actually fits with the plot of the movie. <sighs> I hope they do. I, I think I it's going to be can... like what we saw. I think it's going to be some random footage of her interacting with some characters and then maybe near the middle or end of the movie we get some lines about what's happening to her off screen, whether it's death or not, just, oh yeah, Leia's doing this or whatever. I, I just, don't know. I just don't know. I It's impossible to know. They say they have footage, but I don't think it's going to be a significant amount. I don't think she's going to play a major part in the plot. And for those of you who haven't listened to a previous podcast, they have said they're not doing a recast and they're not doing computer generated um facial uh deep fake whatever it is so yeah we'll see but All luke right. man love what luke's gotta say okay let's hit play your destiny okay can we pause right here all right, uh, hold on. That shot of the, I want to get all that shot of the uh, throne room. Ah, whatever. All right. Sorry. Your destiny. There we go. You got the throne room as is still. Sorry, I, I can't. See Sean. I can't see what Sean sees, so I've got to play by ear here. Yeah, I got um, the throne room as the still right now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the quick things we saw. We saw my favorite ship. Well, actually, not my favorite. My favorite ship is the U wing. My second favorite ship is the Y wing. I love it. Going straight into the belly of a star destroyer, and the star destroyer looks kind of dark and red. Kind of gives the same impression. Um, so people did a photo in hands of the um, Imperial ships from the first trailer, and it looks like there's a red mark on them. Kind of looks similar. There's some sort of red underbelly here. Kind of goes along with the Kylo Ren helmet, where he has the black, but then the red kind of shining through the cracks. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, it looks like BB-8 is leading a charge of people along and uh, a future clip it makes it look like it's the on a ship in space. That's but what I don't I know. I don't. It looks like an Imperial Star Destroyer in space with people on creatures that look like horses riding along with BB-8 leading the charge. Which looks and this is kind of where in the live stream I talked about this looks kind of end game where people are all kind of joining forces and leading this charge. I don't know what they're doing riding on these animals in a starship, capital starship fight, but hey, I'm sure it'll be awesome. I had the same reaction. I felt like they, it looks like they're in space and uh, riding on these horse like creatures. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, I want to talk about the, what's on the screen right now this still of Kylo and Ray in the throne room of the Death Star debris. I mean, I, it's not confirmed, but it's it, it has to be the throne room. I mean, his chair's there, the window. They're obviously trying to show us that this is the throne room where they're meeting. Oh, I absolutely think. Yeah, to me, it's 100% confirmed. Yeah, what else I, would it be? I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, and so uh, what's interesting is I, I'm just going to be interested to see the chronology of these interactions between Kylo and Rey. Is this before or after they have their lightsaber battle up on the debris with all the waters and waves crashing around? Um, 
You know, it just seems like I get the feeling, and I know a lot of people have said this online, some of these scenes make it seem like they are training together or investigating something together. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while I'm like, are they searching the throne room together? And maybe Ray maybe ignites her lightsaber. Maybe they're both looking for something and they both meet up at the throne room. They're like, oh, you're here too. That's we true. meet again. That could very well be the case. Is My Palpatine... We last met Count. Is Palpatine lurking around in this area? Or... I think actually if you look just really in the back, there's like a crumpled little... Th I think that's him just crumpled up dead and he's trying to reanimate the body, so... <laughs> Got his uh, royal guards. He's trying to bring back zombie royal guards. Ooh. Anyway, let's not get the zombie talk. Anyway, I do think this is a cool shot. Obviously, this is the type of thing I was talking about. To me, this is like what I like in terms of fan service. It can serve the purpose of the story, but it's also kind of this cool, oh, they're in the throne room of the Death Star. Like, that's a cool thing that kind of gets everybody excited yeah. type of thing. So we press play. Press it. Okay, we gotta stop it right yeah, there. We gotta stop right there. So the, the more I watch that, that absolutely is Darth Vader's helmet falling to the ground. Okay, is is your screen paused on it? No, let me pause. Try to pause it on it. If you look in the background, this is a stretch, and I know it's a stretch. Tell me when you're there. I'm there. Okay, if you look in the background with the white V's in the background, does that remind you of Vader's egg compartment from Empire Strikes Back? It absolutely Just, does. Could that be something? I mean, could this be Vader's Mustafar or a different kind of meditation room he had? I don't think it'd be Mustafar. Why would it be all white? Everything we saw from his Mustafar fortress in Rogue One was black sure. and red. And But is this maybe where the Emperor has been hibernating in Bacta to keep himself alive on life support? Why do you think they're destroying... Okay, another thing to notice is Kylo's in his helmet... This is, I think, the only scene in the trailer where he's wearing the helmet. That's true. So, don't so know you, what can, that means. you can see, I'm going to try to hover over it. This is the helmet, which is a little bit separated from the rest of the black mass that is being destroyed. Mm -hmm. But that little chunk above, that's the Vader helmet. So mm -hmm. we know Kylo had the Vader helmet and has it or had it in Force Awakens. I would assume he still has it. I mean, why wouldn't he unless someone steals it from him? Like, <laughs> this may be a tangent. You know the shrine of the silver monkey where you have to put all the pieces together? Maybe Kylo has the final piece, the head of the silver monkey, and he's, he brings it to the spot and he puts it on there and nothing happened. He's like, that's it? <sighs> like he was expecting some... I don't know. The other question here is, are Kylo and Ren... Are Kylo and Rey fighting, or are they destroying it together? It looks like they're destroying it together. Okay, I'm going to replay it at full speed and see what I think. Yeah, if you if you watch, even both if swing. They, they both swing, and if you watch, Kylo starts to gesture toward it as it starts to transition out. Watch oh. it one more time. Oh yeah, he kind of goes. Here. He like yeah. yeah, he swings with his right hand and destroys it, and then he kind of with his left hand is like, uh, or does something. But he's clearly not in a defensive position, defending against Ray. He's like totally head down, focused on that thing. Not obviously not worried about an in incoming attack from Ray. Interesting, interesting. All right. Okay, let's keep watching. There's them on the ship in space. With the B-Wing. Oh, yeah. All With right. 
We have to. Okay. We have to talk about this. What is Palpatine in? What I mean is this like the? Uh, could it be like the spider thing from Episode One, where it's <laughs> transporting his hologram walking along the Palisade of Naboo? Let me ask you. Looking at that, this, it kind of looks like that same kind of movement. My initial reaction to this was that has to be Palpatine. And he's in some sort of apparatus that is assisting his movement and mobility. Uh Maybe even holding him upright. Yes. And that doesn't look like a hologram or a force ghost. That (laughs) That robe looks pretty tangible to me. I'll give you that. Yes, it does. So, but... To play devil's sit ghosts come back in black and not blue. What if it's kind of a black, kind of a gray material? There's no aura around it, no. But to play devil's advocate and to agree with your point that he's not in the flesh, could this possibly be some sort of dream sequence that Ray is having, or just a mental vision? Let me watch it one more time. Gosh, I have it freeze where there's lightning kind of shining on more of the stuff. It looks like there's a hood. It looks like he has a little bit of a hand. I mean, it clearly looks like he's like 20 feet tall. Yeah. Uh huh. It's almost like he's on like a miniature ATST walker type height. Yeah. He's, yeah. Not, he's not in an ATST walker, but I mean, it's like. Something up that tall. I still think it's a little spidery things from uh, episode one. I'm calling it. That's how JJ's going to tie in episode one. He's going to have the little spidery thing. So I, my last thought here on. So my last thing here on Palpatine is, obviously in the last footage we saw Dark Ray with her double bladed lightsaber. I am thinking that. That was part of some sort of dream sequence or vision, and this also will be some sort of vision that she has. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with you, and I only came up with this theory as you were talking. Look at the floor. The floor is not Death Star floor. It is the ice planet. From my perspective, it looks like ice planet floor. See, to me, it just looks like kind of cement, dust, cement type doesn't look like ice. I don't know. I think, well, I don't think it's a dream sequence. I think this is real. I think this is real life. But then again, I don't know. Okay, let's push, let's finish this trailer. We're almost done here. All right. The force will be with you. Always. That's way at the end. Yeah, so we see Luke finish The Force Will Be With You and Leia capstoning it with Always. Is there anything else after that? No. In theaters, Christmas. Looks like... So Force Awakens, this is neither here nor there. Force Awakens was a yellow. Uh, Last Jedi was a red. This is the blue kind of theme. It looks like it kind of goes along with the ice planet kind of filter looking thing and Death Star kind of watery. Um, just interesting to me. The music was very nice. A lot of, we haven't talked at all about the music, but there's a lot of just seems like a very basic Star Wars main theme lay motifs all over the place. I didn't hear any other themes. I didn't hear any anything else, but I also wasn't listening to it for it. No, yeah, I think uh, the more I watch it, the more I think it was a pretty good trailer. My first reaction was, eh, there wasn't anything that really wowed me, but I feel like we got a good amount of stuff in that trailer. Well, I've watched this trailer now a fair number of times, and I think I've about said as much as I can about this. I'm excited for this movie. Like I said in the live stream, there's more stuff coming out. There's going to be TV spots. There's always new footage with those. There's always new footage with the international trailer and kind of uh, 
Um, sometimes the Japanese one will have a bit more. So, I mean, the, just keep your eyes out. If you want to go into lockdown, you should go into lockdown now because there's going to be a huge media push the next few months uh, getting you to buy tickets and go see this. Sean and I have already done it. We've already bought in. So uh, That's right. We will be seeing it on opening night at 7, 7.30, I think, is our tickets. So. Yep. I'm pretty excited for it. Um, once again, thank you so much for watching. If you participated in the live stream, thank you for that. And leave some comments below. We obviously gave a lot of our own opinions on what's happening in this trailer. Do you agree? Oh, you're yours. Yeah. Do you disagree? What are what do you think is going to happen in this movie? What do you want to happen? Um, do you think the movie is going to meet your expectations? We want to hear all of those things. Let's start a discussion. And like Joseph said in the live stream and earlier, The Mandalorian's coming out. We got um, episodes of that. We got, um, obviously, more TV spots and things for Episode Nine. There is plenty to talk about over the next couple months for Star Wars fans. And we are looking forward to doing that. So uh, leave a comment below. Like, subscribe uh, to the channel so you can get updates if we live stream again or if we put out another video. And until next time, Joseph, what should these people be doing? Keep those stocks salty. Keep them salty, people. All righty.